Oh, well, look at this mess. You know, it's just yesterday I had the cover off that uh, drill press, and now uh, look at the snow and everything. Here's the oxalson, and uh, there's the drill press. I've got light bulbs. I got a light bulb burning in there, uh, a 60 watt, and I got a 100 watt burning in that one. Cover the base a little bit better. Ooh, I'm gonna have to fix that. Hey, let's go on in here. I got something to show you. I didn't get the hand wheel off that today. So we'll do something else right now. <clears throat> All right. Now, I'm gonna talk about the, uh, the cutting tool uh, that I use for um, um, close tolerance on, on just about all materials, unless you need something really exotic, like a polycrystalline diamond or something, that's not very, <laughs> very often. Um, so the tool I'm using, what I, what I was using, and uh, the old guys I know, was ISCAR, AR style, uh, braised carbide um, tool bits. You know, three eighths or uh, one end one half inch shag, and those become non-existent. I just kind of poked around. I can't find those anywhere, not even used on eBay. And uh, what uh, I discovered, kind of complaining about it, a so guy had a, a, a screw machine shop, and he says, well, have you tried Micro 100, which is, uh, uh, this is a lot of years ago too. Um, which had their headquarters in Lewiston, Idaho. Now they're kind of a worldwide thing, I guess, I don't know. But uh, I could get the bits locally over in Spokane from uh, a couple of industrial dealers. And so I started trying them out and I found them every bit as good as the uh, carbide C2 grade. Now, the Micro 100 is, uh, as far as I know, they just have one grade, and it's general purpose C2. And I'll give you a good rule of thumb. Always start with the softer grade carbide and work your way up. Because what happens if the carbide's too brittle? It'll chip and it'll just trash your last cut and run your piece. And your bearing will just, you know, you'll just, I don't know. But <laughs> you don't want that to happen. But really good soft quality carbide, as, instead of chipping as it wears back, it it just um, it just does it resists chipping and it still stays sharp. And I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about an advantage to that little thing. Um, Maybe this time, maybe later or something. But I wanted to get you on to this Micro 100 Carbide because uh, it works uh, uh, good at all kinds of speeds. I, I did a video of uh, turning the uh, spindle up to 4,000 RPM and uh, cutting into some pre-hard. I think it was about three inches in diameter and the tool failed. And that was a lot of fun. But anyway, the tools hold up real good. And uh, uh, let's have a look at one here. Now, see, I have this one, this half-inch shank. And you can see my M100 AR. That's an AR8. This is a 3 8 AR, AR6. Okay, I mentioned, uh, I thought that I got get them at Travers. Um, I used to get them at MSC, and I don't think they have, have it anymore, but Pen Tool does. Now let's go over here and have a look. Okay, see if I get that working. Pen Tool, your partner in precision. I bought a bunch of stuff from them, and they're great. And the Micro uh, 100, uh, 3 8 is $17.30 each. Uh, the half inch is $18.24 each. <laughs> the, uh, you can get a half inch shards for $2.10. Now, <laughs> I think one of these, 
will outlast two boxes of that import stuff. Okay, and uh, I, I was just noticing here, this is uh, uh, one I, <clears throat> excuse me, picked up. It, it was probably in a box or something. I don't think I bought this new. And it, it looks at, like it has the older logo, and I don't recognize that grinding or whatever there. But uh, here's an ACT tool. It's kind of old. And we're looking from the, at the side profile. This is, happens to be a threading tool, I think. Uh, you can see how much, how thick that chunk of carbide is on there compared to the same size of another brand. See, let's see if I can get that down there. See, this one's quite a bit thinner. This one's thicker, the Micro 100. So, well, anyway, you can take, uh, um, because the carbide's thicker, you can increase the angles and give it some back rake. Okay? Yeah, you got a, enough carbide to uh, give it some back rake along with that side rake. You can even increase that side rake by a degree. So that's a good reason to use this tool other than uh, its outstanding ability to hold up. And uh, it'll generally not chip. And <clears throat> general purpose grade, they call it. They uh, really didn't list it in the in the C, you know, the the C grade. And um, um, carbide inserts, you know, they they have all kinds of weird labels on them and try to figure out, you know, just what grade they are, like these uh, ISCAR inserts here. You know, it, you have to look up in their catalog to figure out what that is. Insert, inserts are great, but uh, when, you're, when you're going for um, really close tolerance, you're taking very, very uh, shallow cuts, and as shallow as possible. And it seems like, you know, on pre-hard and stuff like that, um, about uh, an average cut would be, for me, would be, um, on this Monarch here, would be a one and one half thousandths depth. And that's not very deep. And the tool's got to be very, very sharp. And, uh, and the feed very fine. And the speed very high. And uh, it's good for about two or three cuts. So you get close to the finished size and you, and you get that in there and you make the first cut. And then after it, you, you base the second cut, which will be the last cut after the first cut. You know, checking for taper, checking for uh, target size. But when you're working up to uh, to get to the close tolerance, it's best to practice first on eliminating the taper. And, uh, and that's the pushover that the tool normally does on a piece of work um, unsuspended by the tailstock in a chuck. And uh, that's an important thing to do for, for a number of reasons. <laughs> okay. So we're creating a high shear tool with a very small nose radius with a very small feet, ideally less than one thousandths. And um, I can get into that later on how machines changed. Um, the uh, square dial um, 10 EE um, has feeds down to one half thousandths. And the round dial ones uh, had feet uh, one thousandths or more, I can't remember. But if you can get less than a thousandths, that's very helpful for the, uh, the best finishes. And the best finish uh, also means you've <laughs> you got the best surface and the best accuracy. Um, so, um, you're, you're shooting for a good finish. I guess what I'm trying to say, too, is you got to find the minimum depth of cut 
the optimum feed and speed to get the finish good enough for what you're trying to do. It's all a compromise and a, a bit of balancing. So I hope, I think I might have gave you a few things to chew on and uh, uh, a good uh, tip in the direction of tools. You know, just go ahead and spring the 20 bucks for a tool and check it out. It, it's not going to break the bank. And they do last a very long time. Okay. Oh, I was going to say when I sharpen them, when they get dull after a couple of cuts, I cut them back five thousandths and then um, uh, put that hand radius carefully on them. Okay. I'm going to load this video and shovel snow. Okay.